Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my studio and welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you like my presentations. Today I want to show you how I'm doing a commission, which is normally I'm not showing uh, on a YouTube and that will be pr probably first time. And uh, this is cat, uh, make it from the picture uh, provided by a client. So let's, let's get to it and uh, see you at the painting board. Okay, uh, this is the picture provided by a client and that's not much to uh, mess with it. Uh, sketches uh, sketches already done. I'm going to be using uh, microns and a little bit my ink and uh, dip inks and a uh, little container so I don't have any spill off. So this is the cat. It's a little angry but uh, that's what the customer wanted. And so we're doing inking right now and um, as you see I'm not following the lines. Pencil lines are just guidance for me. Uh, it's a very thin uh, ink line, uh, will probably will disappear when I'll be doing uh, washes. But whatever that stays, that will be part of the painting. And because of the uh, commission, I have to stay in a sort of guidance. I cannot go uh, super abstract. Uh, realistic uh, it just uh, my client seen my work before so uh, she just want to have her cat uh, in a watercolor and I told her about there would be some inking so she agreed she seen some stuff on a, on a YouTube uh, she she kind of excited to see how the her beloved that cat will looks like uh, inking is almost done in this uh, shot you can see it uh, I forgot to say it uh, Main reason why I'm using Pigma Micron is just to see it how it will work in uh, my next future endeavors. And uh, so uh, instead of dipping ink, I decided for this particular project use the uh, Micron. So uh, it's not really much difference. Time for uh, the first wash. I've decided to keep a uh, background monochromatic as well as foreground uh, monochromatic so the cat will stand up and when I'm gonna hit him with uh, inks uh, that he will he will really really stand up as a main focus mainly I uh, drop it uh, on the background there was some like uh, pots and flowers and uh, just there was too much distraction for me so I dropped it from the uh, painting and uh, uh, right now finishing first wash in the process of that, I realized that maybe cat is too, too dark, so I decided to bring that gouache paint. Uh, gouache is uh, generally opaque, and so I can put it on top of the watercolor and uh, I can play with this sort of like a painting with uh, uh, oils. As you see it right now, I'll just go over with gouache paint. In this case is uh, cadmium yellow with a little uh, white and a little, a little touch of black. I'm using dry brush a technique. Uh, like you see it, I'm cleaning my brush over the sponge and that will allow me to do this little cat fur. And uh, later on I will start using also the inks to make a more uh, distinctive in this close-up you can see it, I'm doing paint lift, which is normally done like a little water, uh, sponge, clean up on the sponge, water, and back and forth, back and forth, so that allow me to pick up the paint and make sure that you have a clean brush. This way you can uh, have a more control and not need to make a paper dirty, just lifting the paint. This is a second, second wash, you can say it. Uh, to make a little bit darker background. I'm reason what I'm doing this because later on I'll be lifting paint and make a more more interesting and more dramatic. I want to play background and foreground, which the cat is the foreground, uh, kind of in correlation to each other and make a painting more excited. As you see, I'm continuing lifting on edge and I work uh, dimensions on the, on the close-up. You can see it. I start doing the inking the lines, more lines, more lines. Reason what is is to make an illusion of the, his fur as well to add up more uh, texture to the uh, coat and uh, his body. 
all those lines that uh, won't be visible from the distance it just uh, that's like extra flavor in a in a soup you just want to have this little touch of yours your personality and also give an extra dimension to your painting when I was working on the background and lifting the paint I just realized there's something not right with his face and I was like oh man I just missed the likeness so I have to clean up whole face repaint it redraw again and uh, this is the final uh, approach of the face I'm using the gouache paint uh, to cover my mistakes and uh, and now it's just like it's supposed to be a uh, little touch on the lights uh, hitting his top of the head of course again uh, recovering with a, a gouache paint and they give you a little nice texture when you look the close up it's just kind of like ooh, like a I like it now so I'm finishing the lifting the paint on the background and uh, uh, just little touch ups here and there uh, I'm gonna dry dry the little thing so I see it is a nice contrast that's it's a finish right now as you can see it I did a lot of lifting uh, paint now I'm gonna make a little bit rougher I want to have this little uh, scratch uh, uh, his coat and I'm using hard uh, abrasive uh, sandpaper 80 grade and now you see it that's a nice little texture uh, uh, accomplished with the sandpaper now I'll be using uh, inks uh, mix will be white uh, ink acrylic ink with a black uh, acrylic ink to get uh, more gray than white itself and now will be time to use the ink uh, from my fountain pen and sign a, sign it a painting but also I'll be coming back with a with the same uh, fountain pen to create more lines and more texture on top of the already inking and a, a white gouache I can, can see it here and there almost make a coat look like a silver uh, shiny and uh, reflecting the lights the painting is done at the moment and you can see it how I was working on it a commission for the uh, client uh, I hope you like the presentation so you can see it how I'm operating, how I'm working on a, on a uh, painting. And uh, uh, see you next time on a painting board.